Hello everyone. Welcome to this course, namely NumPy for Data Science. Data Science is one of the hottest fields of the year 2020 and this field is expected to grow exponentially in the coming years. If you want to become a data scientist, it is very important that you are very well aware of the language used in this field, namely Python and the libraries used which comes integrated with the Python language. So moving on, there are many, many libraries in Python that are used in this field, such as matplotlib, tensorflow, numpy, pandas. If you want to become a successful data scientist, it is very important that you have a good knowledge of how to use these libraries so that you can play well with the data. Because right now, data is the king. If you know how to use the data, you can very well turn the tide. So we would be learning about NumPy library in this course. Now about me, my name is Suraj and I would be your course instructor. I am a Mernstack web developer, open source contributor. I also write tech blogs at Hashnode and Dev. So if you want, you can have a look at them. Apart from that, I am also a machine learning enthusiast and I have a knowledge of algorithms, tools and libraries used in Python programming language. So the question rises, what exactly is data science? A data scientist's job is to convert raw data into a valuable one using different tools, algorithms and libraries. And if one knows how to extract the right data that is valuable and useful for a company's business, this can shoot the business of the company 10x times. Hence, this field is one of the most demanded fields. If you look 10 years back, this field was not much in talks. But right now it is in talks. The reason being, we have data. We have years of data right now. And all you need is the skill to extract the valuable information, which can be used for the growth of a company or a business. Moving on, what exactly is NumPy? NumPy is a Python library. But what is the use of this library? So. This library is basically used for scientific computing. This library contains powerful multidimensional array objects. Now, it is important to know what exactly is an array. In simple words, array is a data structure that stores or contains group of elements. And this package gives you powerful multidimensional array objects, which can be used for various tasks. Now, those tasks would include mathematical operations, manipulations, sorting, various other operations. It even gives you the liberty of using linear algebra functions and Fourier transformations. The list goes on. So you can understand how useful this library is. Now the tools required to use this library. There are two tools that you can use for using this NumPy library. The first being Google Colab online tool. This is the link. Don't worry about the links. I would be providing these links in the course resources page. Okay. So you can right now just follow me. You can follow this link and as you can see, we have reached the collab page and now you can open a workspace or we call it here as notebook. You can name your notebook as practice and Open your new notebook. As you can see, you have opened your notebook and here you can run all the codes, which I would be explaining throughout the course. And you can very well execute it here. For example, I type this command. This symbol means run the cell. Now, if you click on this symbol, it would start executing this part of code. This 
is an online web based python notebook that you have accessed okay now to add a code you can click on this button and you can add another piece of code and so on you can run every part of the cell by clicking on this button and if you want to stop you can click on this restart runtime or restart and run all there are various options that you can discover over here you can have a look of all of them and very well use the online tool if you wish to otherwise we can even learn how to use the offline tool to run python programs in which we would be using the numpy package moving on the second tool being jupyter notebook now this is an offline tool you need to download this notebook from the link that i would be sharing over here and you need to install this notebook and once you have installed this notebook you can run the python programs commands and use the numpy package over there and follow the course don't worry i would be providing you with a link and as you can see i have opened the web page you can download this package click on the download button and you can choose whether you want windows or mac os and download this installer now i have already downloaded this and you can check over here you can click here and install this setup click on next i agree just me next and you can choose your directory and move on it may take some time to install this package but once you have installed it you can move on i have already installed this package in my pc you can very well install it and jump to the course i hope you have successfully installed the package and now we would be jumping directly into the course i would be covering everything related to numpy i would be explaining everything from the grassroots level so see you in the next module welcome to this module i hope you could install anaconda easily and played around the software now let's jump into one of the components that anaconda software provides us namely jupyter notebook we would be using this tool to run our python programs which would be having numpy library as you can see we have opened jupyter notebook we can now create a new notebook and run our python programs over here with jupyter notebook running now we can create a new python notebook and run our programs in it click on the new button choose python 3 notebook as you can see this setup is very similar to the ones which we saw on the google collab page you can use either jupyter notebook or google collab throughout this course you'll be getting the same output you don't have to worry about it now moving on we would be starting with the very basics as you know numpy is a python library which provides us multi dimensional array objects and with the help of these array objects you can perform various mathematical operations they may be logical or it may be related to sorting or shape manipulation or etc so now let's first import the numpy package before using the numpy library we must first import it to our code isn't it because if we do not import it how will we use it so to import this package you need to write a simple one line command namely import numpy as np you can rename this variable you can name it anyway you can name it as numpy package or anything but for simplicity we usually use np now to run this code you can either click on run the moment you run it you can see that the library is imported or you can use shift plus enter on your keyboard 
Now, as you know, array is a simple data structure which contains objects. We'll first create a simple array and then convert it to NumPy array. Since you know NumPy provides a multi-dimensional array object, we can convert our arrays to a NumPy array and perform all the computations we need. Or instead, we can create our own NumPy array in the beginning and perform the computations. So first we'll create a simple array and we'll convert it to NumPy array in this module. So moving on, let me create a one dimensional array, one dimensional array, a two dimensional array would be called as a matrix. You might be very well aware of that. Now let me name my array as my array and let me put some numbers 12, 34, 43, 14, 51, 66. Now, if you want to print all the numbers that are present in this array, you can name the array my underscore array and press shift enter or the run cell. I'll be pressing shift enter as it's easy. As you can see, we have printed the output. We have printed every number that was stored in this my array. Now moving on, now moving on, our main task in this module is to convert our simple array to a numpy array. We can do that very easily using np.array and we will be putting the name of our array my underscore array. Check this. Since we imported the numpy package as np, we are using the np package over here. If you give a different name to it, you'll be using a different name over here. Now numpy.array means convert this array into a numpy array and we are passing the array name that is my underscore array. Now let's run this cell. Now this array has been converted into a numpy array. Now see the difference. When I print my array, which is a simple array, our array of numbers that was stored in this array gets printed. But the moment it is converted to a numpy array, we can see that there is a word added over here that is array and then we get the entire list of numbers which were in our array. Now you see this is an object. We have converted our simple array into a numpy array. Similarly, this goes same for a two dimensional array. Similarly, for two dimensional array. Let me name my two dimensional array as my 2d array. It's easier to understand, isn't it? Now, let me fill in some elements in this, say 12, 34 and you can put in any numbers, 43, 14 and then say 51, whatever, 15, 66. Now let me print this array, my underscore 2d array. Now our array has got printed over here. Now I'll be converting this 2d array into a numpy array. You very well know how to convert it. Let me show you once again, numpy array. Converting my 2d array. So you can see we have converted our 2d array, that is a matrix into a numpy array. So that's all in this module, we have seen through how to convert a simple array into a numpy array. Now in the next module, we would be discussing how to create a numpy array, how to generate a numpy array. In this one, we created a simple array and we converted into a numpy array. In the next one, we would be generating a numpy array directly. So see you in the next module. Welcome to this module. Now here we will be discussing how to generate our numpy arrays. Now the first way of generating a numpy array, say I want to generate a numpy array which is holding consecutive numbers. I will be using a range function. Okay. The function name is a range. I would be using this function to do that. First, let me write built-in methods 
generate numpy arrays now since we are generating numpy arrays directly we would be using the np keyword as we imported earlier now numpy array a range in this a range function i would be giving the lower limit and the upper limit of the range of values that i want to print say 0 to 10 now this function would be printing values from 0 to n minus 1 that is 9 it would be printing value from 0 to 9 if i consider the same function and say i put 0 to 20 it would be giving us the values from 0 to 19 i hope this part is clear and i hope you are following along with me now for example i want to print values now for example i want to print values that are not consecutive but are having equal difference in that case i would be passing three parameters to this arrange function that is np dot arrange c 0 to 10 with a difference of 2 every time the number increases so as you can see we have printed a list of even numbers using the numpy dot arrange function providing three parameters so basically the first parameter is the start the second parameter is the end and the third parameter is the step value okay now we have discussed the first way of generating a numpy array using a range function the second way is using the line space function this is the function line space now the line space function prints a set of numbers that are equally spaced in an interval okay let us see np dot line space even this takes in three parameters for example 0 to 10 and the third parameter would be the total numbers you want to print in this given interval those numbers would be equally spaced for example say i want to print 10 numbers i'll be running this code now you can see there are 10 numbers over here all of them are equally spaced when we use this function you can see after 0 it skips two values goes to 2 then again it jumps to 4 then it jumps to 6 but in this case it is generating 10 values in the third parameter here the third parameter is used as a step value but here the third parameter is the total number of numbers in this interval i hope you are not confused moving on the third way of generating a numpy array is np dot zeros now what this function would do is this would generate generate an array of zeros now it takes one or two parameters when it takes one parameter it would generate a 1d array when it takes two parameters it would generate a 2d array for example i put 8 this would be producing an array which would be having eight numbers and all of them are zeros mm, small error oh there's a spelling mistake run this as you can see we have generated an array which is having eight zeros similarly its complement that is np dot ones np dot ones this would generate an array which contains only ones and the array would obviously be a numpy array running this as you can see we have generated an array which is consisting of eight ones similarly if i want to generate a 2d array of zeros that is np dot zeros i would pass in the dimension of the array that is for example i want a 3 cross 4 array which would be having three rows and four columns and running this cell 
you can see I have generated a 3 cross 4 2D array or we can say it as a matrix. Similarly, it applies for similarly it applies for the case of nb dot ones. Now moving on, say I want to generate an identity matrix. Now what is an identity matrix? Identity matrix is a matrix where all the diagonal elements are 1 and rest of the element are 0. I will be using np.i function, np.i function and the parameter that np.i function would take is the total number of diagonal elements. Suppose I want 5 diagonal elements, then I will put in 5 as the parameter and I will run this cell. As you can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5 ones in the diagonal of this identity matrix used to generate identity matrix. Now going on, the next function is random function. With this function, you can generate random list of numbers. Okay. Now to generate a random array using the random function, we'll type np.random dot rand and here we would pass the dimension of the matrix for example I want a 4 cross 5 matrix as you can see it gives me a 4 cross 5 dimension matrix you can even generate a 1d array with this I have considered an example where I generated 2d array or namely a matrix suppose I want a 1d array 1d array of random numbers okay then I'll pass only one parameter to generate a 2d array I'll pass two parameters okay so I hope this is clear now another way of generating an array or a matrix using the numpy package is using the random function now this function returns normalized values okay and that is np dot random dot rand n suppose I want an array which is having four numbers it would be generating an array which is consisting of normalized values okay now for those who don't know what exactly normalization is in simple words a normal distribution is a distribution where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one now these numbers are a part of standard normal distribution graph. Standard normal distribution graph is a bell shaped curve. It's a bell shaped curve. Now the speciality of this graph is it allows us to make comparisons across infinitely many normal distributions that can possibly exist. Okay. A normal distribution has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So these values are actually the values that are generated from that L shaped graph okay it gives out normalized values okay now moving on similarly you can generate a 2d matrix using the random function okay now if you want to generate a random integer function then simple we'll be using a rand int function np dot random dot rand int function and now for example I want to generate 10 numbers from a range of 1 to 20. 1 to 20 I want to generate 10 numbers. I have given 3 parameters as you can see. Now with this function we would be getting 10 numbers from the given interval. Since it's a random function if you run it these values would change. Suppose I run it again you can see the values are changing. Okay similar is the case with this the values would be changing every time you run this cell that is what random function does now rand gives you values from 0 to 1 rand n gives you normalized values rand int gives you integer values and all those values are random they would be changing every time you run the cell with this we have completed this module and 
in the next module i would be discussing different methods that are used in numpy arrays remember in the first module we discussed how to convert a normal array into a numpy array in the second module we discussed how to generate a numpy array directly in the third module we are going to discuss the different methods that we can use in the numpy array okay so i hope this module is clear and see you in the next module hello everyone welcome to this module in this module we would be discussing the different methods associated with numpy arrays as well as the different array operations and mathematical functions that can be performed on a numpy array so moving on let us consider a numpy array and i would be filling that array with a different integers or in other words random integers and i would be storing it in a variable named array let us see that array equal to let me consider 20 random integer values from 0 to 100 and let me run this cell and check so yeah in this array we are storing 20 random integer values that vary between the given intervals 0 to 100 now the first method that we are going to talk about is shape now the shape method gives the dimension of the array if you consider a 3 cross 2 matrix then the shape of the 3 cross 2 matrix would be 3 comma 2 similarly for a 4 cross 1 matrix it would be 4 comma 1 it would give you the dimension of the matrix or array so to find the shape of this array we'll use the shape function and you can see this is the shape of the given array now for example i want to change the dimension of this array or in other words i want to reshape it i want to change the dimension then i would use the reshape function for example array reshape and now i would be putting in the dimensions in which i want to reshape the given array now the important point to note over here is if there are for example if you consider a 1d array and there are 20 elements then you can reshape that into a 4 cross 5 matrix or a 5 cross 4 matrix or a 10 cross 2 matrix or a 2 cross 10 basically the product of the dimension should be equal to the number of elements present in the matrix now say if i want to reshape this array in 4 cross 5 matrix then you can see i have converted this 1d array into a 4 cross 5 matrix and obviously this is a numpy 2d array similarly if i try to reshape it in 10 comma 2 of dimension 10 comma 2 then you can see i can reshape it in this dimension but now for example i want to reshape it in Say eleven comma three. Then you can see this wouldn't be possible. You cannot reshape an array of size twenty into the shape eleven comma three. Even the product of eleven and three would be thirty three, which wouldn't be equal to twenty. Now moving on, if you want to transpose this array, then you can simply add dot t function. For example, array. Dot. Say I reshape this array in four comma five of dimension four comma five, and I want to transpose this. I'll simply add dot t. T stands for transpose of the matrix. So when I run this cell, you can see the entire array has been transposed. Now let me delete this. Say cut it, cut it. And you can see the difference. Four comma five matrix and the transposed four comma five matrix. You can see what is the difference. 
Now moving on to different array operations or mathematical functions that you can perform in your NumPy array. Consider an array and say it stores element in the range 1 to 10 and let me run this cell. The range Okay, so I forgot to put A in a range 1 to 10. So yeah, you can see that this is the array using the arrange function. And suppose my first function would be multiplication or namely the method. If I want to multiply each and every element of the array from itself, I'll simply multiply the array with itself. This would, in other words, this would give us the second power of every element. So you can see 1 square, 1, 2 square, 4, 3 square, 9. Similarly, if I multiply it again, array, you see it, it would give you the cube of all the elements that were present in the NumPy array. Now, similarly, you can divide, add or subtract from the array say array minus 4 now moving on we can similarly divide or add and so on now now if you want to rise the element to a power to a given power for example fourth power or fifth power then you have to use two star symbols for example array double star 4. This would raise each and every element present in the array to its fourth power. So you can see each and every element has been raised to the fourth power. Hello everyone. Welcome to the new module. In this module we would be discussing some more functions that are associated with NumPy. I hope you have been enjoying the course all along and solving the quizzes that I have given and learning out of it. So moving on. Let me create a new array, for example, array equal to numpy dot a range and giving it a range from 1 to 10, running the cell. Let me print the array and now the array has been printed. Now let me consider a case where I have to find the square root of all the numbers that are present in the array. In that case, I would be using the square root function that is given by the numpy library. So to find the square root, I will be using np.sqrt where sqrt stands for square root and I will pass array as the parameter array and I will print this. So now you can see in the result we have got the square root value of each and every number that was present in the array. 3 square equals 9 and similarly 1 square equals 1. So Moving on to the next function, the next function is the max function. Now we have this array which has numbers from 1 to 9. If I want to find the maximum number that is present in the array, now it is obvious that in this case the maximum number would be 9. But if say I had a huge array which has got multiple numbers, in that case if I want to find the maximum value of a number, I would be using the max function. And that would be written as np.max and again this would be taking one parameter that would be the array that I have created array and let me run this cell the maximum value is 9 if I consider an array having random integers that is array equal to np.random.randint and if I am specifying the range from say 1 to 100 with 30 random integers running this cell and running and printing the array so I have got a set of random integers 30 random integers from the given range if I want to find the maximum number from this I will use np.max and pass array as the parameter and now you can see 97 is the maximum number that is present in this array having random integers. 
So moving on, if we can find maximum number in an array, isn't it obvious that there would be a minimum function? So I'll be using np dot min and I'll pass array as the parameter and I'll run this. So the minimum value is four. Our next function would be the argmax function. When I use the max function, it returns me the value of the maximum element present in the array. If I want to find the index of the maximum number that is present in the array, then I would be using argmax function. So np dot argmax and I'll pass array as the parameter. And you can see the index of the maximum number. Index of the maximum number is four. Fourth index. So if you have a look at the array, this is zero, first, second, third, and fourth index. So our maximum number is present in the fourth index. If I want to find the index of the minimum number, in that case I'll be using arg min np dot arc min and I'll pass array as the parameter and I'll run this the first one that is zero and first index. I hope this part is clear and we would be discussing some more functions. So now the functions that would be discussing would be more oriented to mathematics. For example, finding sine or log or cos of a given number. So moving on, we would first discuss about the log function. Now consider I want to find the log value of each and every element that is present in my array. Okay, for that I would be simply using log function that is np dot log and I'll pass array as the parameter and I'll run this. Now you can see this would be giving me the log value of each and every number that is present in the array over here. Similarly, if I want to find the sign value of each and every number that is present in our numpy array, I'll simply use the sign function that is np dot sign and I'll pass array as the parameter and I'll run this. So as you can see, I've got the sign value of each and every number that was present in the array. Similarly, you have got cos function, tan function, okay, like np dot cos and I'll pass array. You get the cos value. If I put tan, you get the tan value. So you can see that we can find the trigonometric ratios of each and every number using numpy. Moving on, let me consider a 2D matrix now. Say array equal to np dot random. I'll fill in random normalized values in this two dimensional matrix. So I'll be putting rand n where n stands for normalization. And let me say, let me make a three cross four matrix and I'll print this. So this is my matrix. Well, I'll rename it as matrix Mat matrix. So we have a three cross four matrix that is filled with values that are normalized. Okay. Now, if I want to round off all the elements that are present in this matrix to say a second decimal place up to two decimals, or if I want to round this off up to three decimals, in that case, I can simply use round function. So what I mean is np dot round function and my first parameter would be the array or the matrix that I have created that is matrix and the second parameter would be the decimals up to which I want to round each and every number that is present in the matrix or array. I will be putting decimals equal to say I want to round this up to three decimal places. I will put three as the value and I will run this. Okay. So you can see I have rounded the values that were present in this array up to three decimal places. So now finally if I want to find the data type of the matrix or one dimensional array in that case I would be using d type function. Okay. Say if I want to find the data type of this matrix I'll write matrix dot d type. This will give me the data type of the entire matrix. Okay. And I'll run this function. So it is float 64 which means 
I have got decimal values over here and decimal values are called float values in programming. So I hope this part is clear and if you have any doubt you can rewatch the entire video and practice and you can solve the questions that would be given as an assignment to you and it's okay to make mistakes because even when I was a beginner I made a lot of mistakes and if you make any mistakes learn from them implement it and keep revising okay until then see you in the next module hello everyone welcome to this module here we would be discussing indexing and comparison of numpy arrays so starting on let me consider an array which would contain elements from the range 1 to 10 that is np dot a range from 1 to 10 and let me run this cell now as you can see our array stores elements from 1 to 10 inclusive of 1 and exclusive of 10 okay now suppose i want to show the element at fourth index of this numpy array in that case i would write the fourth index i would use the square brackets and put in 4 as my index number and this would show me this would show me the element present in the fourth index okay you see element in the fourth index is 5 0 1 2 3 4 fourth index element is 5 moving on if i want to show elements present in different indexes okay in that case i'll be putting multiple index values so array double brackets and i'll be putting index values for example i want to see the element that is present in zero index fifth index and eighth index i'll be running this cell and you can see it returns me the value of numbers that are present in the respective indexes note that when i am putting in multiple indexes then i'm using two square brackets okay be careful regarding that now for example i want to show elements from a range of indexes okay then you need to use array suppose from 0 to 5th index i want the values from 0 to 5th index present in the array then i'll use this format and i'll run this cell it prints out all the integers that are present from 0 to 5th index okay now moving on now say i want to replace the values present in the indexes okay in that case say i want to replace the value present in the second index with 4 okay and i run this cell and now i print the array what would happen i re i have replaced value present in the second index initially what was the value present in the second index 0 1 2 3 the value was 3 i have replaced that value with 4 okay i hope this part is clear now for example i want to replace values from a range of indexes okay in that case similar to what we discussed over here i would be using the same format here that is array say from 3 to 7 i want to replace in this case i had print out the values that were present in the index now i would be replacing the elements that are present in the range of indexes from here okay in that case suppose i want to replace all those elements with say this number and i run this cell and i print it now you can see i have replaced the following indexes with the numbers that i had input consider a two dimensional matrix that is say i give it a name as array 2d and and fill it with a range of elements starting from say 1 to 20 i want elements from 1 to 20 so i would be giving the following range 1 to 21 since 21 would not be included and let me reshape this 
into four cross five matrix. Okay, orange. Yeah, and let me print the array two D. So this is my following array that I have printed. Now, for example, when I considered the case of a one-dimensional array, and if I had to show the elements from a given indexes, I used the following format. That is, I gave the index range from zero colon to the index I wanted to show. If I consider that case, if I want to show elements in a two D array, then I can use a similar format. But here, the case would be slightly different. It would take in two values, one for the row and other for the column. Say I take array two D, and I want to show all elements. I want to select all elements from the row, and I want to select the fourth and second column. From the given 2D array, then in that case I would be giving 2 comma 4 as an input. Okay, this indicates I have selected everything from the row, and this specifically indicates the row, and this specifically indicates the column number. Okay, and let me run this cell. It gives me the second and fourth column, including all the rows. This is first row, second row, third row, fourth row, and second column, fourth column. Zero, one, two, three, four. Second column and fourth column. And say, if I put in the row value as one comma two, and run this cell, comma two, and I run this cell, so you can see it would give me the specific value at the index specified over here. Now moving on to selection of different values in array and obviously copying the numpy array. So first, let me talk about selection. Let me consider a one D array, a one D numpy array, np dot range, which contains element from one to ten, which means it would be having nine elements. Let me run this cell. So this is my one dimensional array. Now consider if I want all the values that are less than five. That means array less than five. If I run this, it returns a boolean value. When I put in this argument, okay. Now, if I want specified number instead of a boolean value, then I will substitute the same thing in the array. I would be substituting this part into the index of the array. That is, array of Array less than five. I would be substituting this value in the index part, and I'll run this cell. Now this would give me a list of numbers that are less than five. If I put in less than or equal to five, then it would return me one, two, three, four, five. As you can see, now the last part of this model that I would be discussing is the copy function. Now say I replace the number present at the third index with the following number. Okay. And I run this cell, and I print the array. You can see the number gets replaced, but the problem here is, suppose I wanted the original array. Okay, though I have replaced that specific element, I want array in my original form, in the earlier or previous form. Now it is not possible over here, so I can use the copy function to copy the elements of My predefined array. Now, if I redefine this array, say array equal to np dot a range with one comma ten, and I print the array. Now, if I want to make any changes in the array, then it is always good to have a copy of the current version of the array, and then if you want to make any changes, you can make any changes in the given array. Okay, but your original form would be preserved. For that, you can use the copy function. Say array underscore copy underscore copy equal to array dot copy function. Okay, and if I run this cell, if I run array underscore copy, you can see array underscore copy would be storing my original array. Now, if I want to make any changes in this array, suppose the third index, I change it to this number. And I print the array. 
you can see this is a changed array since i already saved a copied version in the array underscore copy i can successfully hold i can have an earlier version of my array so with this we have completed this module and in the next module i would be discussing about the input output operations until then keep practicing and if you have any doubts you can rewatch the video and let me see you in the next module hello everyone welcome to the final module of this course where i would be discussing about input and output operations in numpy and starting on first let me change my directory to the desktop i'll be using cd command desktop this would change my directory working directory into the desktop directory okay and i'll run this cell now my directory has been changed to the desktop one okay now what exactly is input and output operations for example i have an array and i want to save that array into a format in my local pc okay in the hard disk okay so there are different formats i can save my array in binary format or i can save my array in a text format or i can save my array in a zip format okay there are different formats to save your numpy array similarly once you have saved that array you can even load that array you can load that array which was earlier saved in text form or binary form okay so i would be discussing a few saving formats and leave the rest to your own discovery okay so moving on let me make an array that i have to save array to save and let me give an arrange arrange of 10 okay let me run this array and you can see i have stored numbers from 1 to 9 now moving on suppose i want to save this array in binary format okay i want to save the array in binary format in that case i would be simply using np.save np.save okay and it would take two arguments the first argument would be the file name that i have saved and the second argument would be the array that i have saved so let me rename the file as array underscore saved binary since it's saved in binary format i am considering that okay and which array do i want to save the array to save and now let me run this now if you check my desktop okay the array has been saved in binary format point to be noted here is the extension the extension of the file would be dot npy okay now say i want to run this with notepad for example so you can see binary file it would be opening my binary file of this format okay now the reason why this file is saved in desktop is i changed my directory to desktop earlier okay otherwise the file would have been saved in the previous directory where i was working okay so moving on now if i want to load that binary file that i have saved just now i'll be using np.load function np.load okay and i would be in I'll, i would be passing the first parameter as the file with which that was saved the file name okay array underscore save underscore binary okay and the most important part over here is you need to put the extension as well which was dot npy and i run the command now you can see i have i am loading the array that was saved just now over here okay now the second way to save your array is as a text file you can save your array as a text file okay for example i name the array as array to save and let me initialize the array as np dot 
range and with having 10 numbers now i want to save the array in a text file okay for that case i would be using np dot save text save txt here txt stands for text and the first argument would be the name of the file which would be saved in the text format which let me name it as array underscore saved in say text format and I would be including the file extension as well and the second argument would be the name of the array that was array to save that I reinitialized just here okay and if you want you can even place a delimiter okay as a comma now what exactly is a delimiter okay delimiter is is used to separate is used to separate the values okay and let me save this okay and now i have saved that file if i go to my desktop and check over here which is array underscore saved txt and if i open this you can see my array has been stored in the text format okay so similar way if i want to save my file in a zip format i would be using dot save z function okay there are different formats in which you can save your array and if you want you can reload it and use it when required okay i leave that part to your own research and and with this we have completed our final module i hope whatever we discussed over here it has been clear and if not you can rewatch the whole video i'll be sharing this jubyter notebook until then i would suggest you to keep practicing keep discovering and don't let the curiosity in you die okay so hello everyone First of all, I would like to congratulate each and every learner of this course. I hope you found this course very interesting and you enjoyed your time learning this course. Learning NumPy is your first step on your own journey of becoming a data scientist. There are many libraries that come with Python such as Matplotlib, TensorFlow, Pandas, Keras. So don't stop here. Libraries like TensorFlow which is used in making machine learning models, Scikit-learn which is used for data analysis. open cv which is used in the field of computer vision if you enjoyed learning this library then as you move on you're going to enjoy double or triple times of this so don't let the curiosity in you die there may be times where you might feel that you should just leave this and just go back to your old ways but please do not do that that is the time when you put in your maximum effort and it may not take a month or two to become a data scientist it takes years to become an experienced and a professional data scientist but that hunger of learning more would surely reduce your time reaching your goal and please feel free to share your progress with me i'll be the happiest person on earth to see your progress and if you have any suggestions or any constructive comments related to this course or if you want or if you want courses that are related to the field of data science then you can surely reach me from the resources section that i have provided in this course and lastly i would say don't stop here keep on learning and remember it's very normal to commit mistakes because if you do not commit any mistakes then there wouldn't be any learning so be proud if you make any mistakes and also rectify them learn from them and try not to commit those again with such mentality motive and perception you will surely move ahead and become a successful data scientist until then Take care and keep moving forward.